Hello everybody and welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. Today we're playing a super cheap, ultra budget, $5 Pioneer deck based around Clothis' design, brand new from Theros Beyond Death, so it is a mono green devotion style strategy. Now if you're going to purchase this deck on Moto, it is of course 5 ticks, and in the paper world it is $45 because it is making use of Nyx Lotus, which is cheap on Moto but not as much in paper, but it is a mono green devotion style strategy so I really wanted to use it. And uh, really the most expensive thing about this deck is the sideboard. So if you're on a super 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 budget and cut down on some things in the sideboard and the Nyx Lotuses in paper, you can build this deck for like 10 bucks, like it can seriously be built dirt cheap and still work out basically the same way that I built it. Um, so the last time we played a $5 deck on the channel, it was Mono Green Elves, it was a couple months ago and we ended up with a record of like 2 and 3 if I remember correctly. So we're going to see if today's deck can do a little bit better than that. Um, but really any wins with a $5 deck are super welcome, so we'll see if we can take down some $400 decks. So as always, hit that like button down below if you're excited for today's video. It really helps the algorithm and helps the video get into more recommended sections. And with that, let's get right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. If you wanted to pick up today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you'd like to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss deck ideas for future videos. All right, so I know you're looking at a lot of mana dorks on your screen right now, but the deck really feeds off of mana dorks. It just wants to chain a bunch of mana dorks, and that is what it tries to do. So at the end there, you see Druid of the Cowl, which is one you don't typically see. If you had a few more dollars, you can run Incubation Druid, but I want to cut as much cost as possible uh, for the sake of this being an ultra budget deck. So let's move on to what we're going to do to capitalize off of this. Since we're playing a bunch of little creatures, Shamanic Revelation is going to be able to chain off into another Shamanic Revelation, playing a bunch of mana dark so we have a bunch of mana we can basically try to draw our entire deck and since we have a bunch of these tiny little one ones then we can get attacked down very easily by aggro because we don't have good blockers so as the test and petitioner comes into play and gains life equal to your devotion to green chain these together with the shamanics and the mana dorks and we can just gain massive chunks of life and stay in the game now this is the main body of the deck playing mana dorks playing stats and petitioners gaining chunks of life draw on your deck that's the body of the deck so let's move on to our actual power so Karamentra's Acolyte is a, another clunky mana dark and Nyx Lotuses as well. They both serve the same purpose. They're the explosive mana drops. We really want to get one of these on turn two or whatever, or not turn two, but uh, on curve so that they can tap equal to our Devotion of Green. And we're going to have a lot of Devotion of Green, especially with that Gigantosaurus. That Gigantosaurus is there just for Devotion, but also can be a backup win con because it is a five mana 10-10. Very thick, but generates a lot of green Devotion. So with these Nyx Lotuses, and Karametra's Acolytes, and if we have a Shamanic Revelation, it'll really help us change Shamanic into Shamanic and just basically try to draw out our deck. That is the plan. So Gigantosaurus also generates a bunch of devotion for Clothis' design. Now Clothis' design is ultimately what the deck wants to find. Either you have it in your opener, or you find it out of Shamanic Revelation, and you're going to have a ton of mana dorks flooded out onto the board, and the Gigantosaurus and whatnot. So Clothis' design is basically an aspect of Hydra, but you're for your entire team. And I feel like this is straight up an upgrade in Pioneer to end race Forerunners. So thanks to Theros Beyond Death. So basically when you cast a bunch of mana darks, chain off a of shamanic and play this, your whole team is going to get like plus 20, plus 20. Unfortunately, no trample, but we go wide enough, so it shouldn't matter. But like plus 20, plus 20, swing in and your opponent's definitely dead. We got a total of 22 lands. The more the merrier nowadays, I feel like more and more people are getting mana screwed and going up in land count. I personally am one of them. I like a lot, but you can definitely get away with 21 if you want. And also, if you have a little bit more money, you can definitely run Nick those Shrine to Nyx. Since it's like the main card of Devotion decks, it helps out a lot, but it's quite pricey. So let's move into the sideboard. As always, if I do change it, I'll let you know right now. But we have two copies of Mist Cutter Hydra. This is our anti-control. Good against Blue White, good against Mono Blue Tempo and Spirits and things like that. Um, so it can be countered, it's pro blue, and it's got haste. So if you have a bunch of mana generated off of things like Karametra's Acolyte and Nyx Lotus, you can make a really big, uncounterable, hasty Mist Cutter Hydra and just destroy control players. And then we got two copies of Damping Sphere. 
They shut down Nykthos if you run those, but we don't run them in the budget version, so we can run that. And it's really great against the Lotus Field Storm decks, the Jeskai Ascendancy combo, the Underworld Breach combo, and anything that's trying to chain off things. And then we have a play set of Shaper Sanctuary, which is amazing against Interaction. I feel like this is a, a primo mono green sideboard card if you're running a creature based uh, green deck. So. Whenever they target your stuff, you get to draw cards. And so you try to kill your creatures, you get to stay in it. And uh, this, that's the same reason that we have the play set of Life Crafters Bestiary, some card advantage against the decks that have sweepers. If you're going up against a deck with sweepers, uh, you're gonna wanna stay up in card advantage because if you commit your whole entire hand to the board and it just gets swept, then you have nothing. So with Life Crafters Bestiary, you can go ahead and take the game slow and then you can pay an extra mana and draw cards for each creature you play. And it's quite a cheap card as well. And then we got three copies of Reclamation Sage to blow up artifacts and enchantments because every deck needs a little bit of that. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Really quick before we get into the gameplay, it is time to welcome a brand new patron to the family, Robert Spears. Thank you very much for your tier two pledge. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the Marination. And with that, let's get right into the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Audemungi, and we are going to be on the draw here with some Pioneer $3 Revelation, and that's going to be a keep. And of course, we're on the draw again. Oh man, we've been on the draw all day long. It really hurts, because this deck really, really... A, any deck with Mana Dorks really wants to be on the play, because it uses those Mana Dorks to really capitalize off of the speed. But being on the draw means that, oh, now Mana Dorks mean we go at the same speed as our opponent. I'll say the life's bounty off of the planes. So that means this this could be one of two things, either black, white, SRAM auras or uh, mono, white, Heliod, Ballista combo. Could also be green, white, Heliod, Ballista combo, but most likely I'm thinking mono, white, Heliod, Ballista. Okay, so it is black, white, SRAM. Um, but the good thing about this is that they're not really going to deal with our stuff. So we're going to be able to do what we want to do. And this attention petitioner could like stabilize us a bit. And no matter how much life they gain off of like Gift of Orzovas and maybe if they play Squire's Devotion or something like that, um, we should be able to counteract it with um, Clothis' design because Clothis' design should swing for way more than they can gain. All right, let's just play a couple of Mana Darks here. But the problem also is that they can have chump blockers and uh because clavis is designed does not give trample but in this matchup like i doubt they're gonna thought seize us in any kind of way and so this shamanic relation should draw us a lot undisrupted unless we die before we can get to that point because all that glitters is really huge but they don't have trample currently so i'm hoping for no griff spoon only vigilance it is fine. I would end up chumping it next turn anyways, so I might as well chump it now. They got zero cards left in hand, and I would have to chump it at some point. So let's chump it. And then we will play our Karametra's Acolyte. Get our ramp on like a tampon. So I'd like to draw land so I don't have to tap Karametra's Acolyte to go Druid plus Satessin Petitioner. Then I can tap the Karametra's Acolyte for Nyx Lotus. The next turn, it can be pretty explosive going for that Nyx Lotus, or going for the Shamanic Revelation. So this gives protection, right? Protection from a color of your choice. So it can get pro green and get in unblockably. That's a really big problem, actually. Land? Didn't get a land, but that works too. So land war elves. Into Satesan Petitioner. for six play druid of the cowl plus nyx lotus and the next turn we'll have a pretty explosive turn 
because we'll have a lot of mana we're gonna draw six cards potentially seven if we top deck a creature and then see if we can find a Clothis's design maybe we can do this all in one turn let's see but the opponent does have two turns of unblockability here, so if I have any chance to chump block, I will take it. And Karametra's Blessing also gives Indestructible. Alright, that's fine. Pro green, yep, so gets an Unblockably. And they have another one there to give it Unblockable next turn, so... I'm going to have to chain into another massive Satessan Priest here. But there's a good chance I can actually do that, because I'm going to draw a lot. Let's see what we get. Yo, what's up, Dan? What's up, Dan? Long time no see. It's it's crazy. You and uh, Jungle Fiverr came here today, and you guys haven't been here in a long time, and, and, and you guys came here the same day. It's really cool. Hope you're having a nice day. All right, Drew to the Cowl. Now I get to draw seven cards. So let's add our Devotion to Green here. Shamanic Revelation. Come on, more Stetson Petitioners. I need a Stetson Petitioner. Please. Uh, oh, we got another, we got another Shamanic Revelation. So this Elvish Mystic is basically free because of our devotion shenanigans. Play a land. All right, let's think. Do, can I afford to go for Druid of the Cowl here? I think I can. All right, um, I don't think I can afford to tap out for another Caramanches Acolyte. It's only one devotion, wasting three total. So now it's tap for 10 here, Shamanic Revelation. Come on, where's my Satess and Priests? I'm, I've drawn so much cards. I just need one more. There's also no Gigantosaurus either. Where are they all at? All right, I still have one more chance though. Let me see, let me think about this. So if I were to tap all my mana here, that is 10. So I can play two more guys. No, I have to keep three up though. I have to keep three up. So I, I can play one more dude. Then I can Shamanic. Then I can play Stetson Priest. I guess I have to do it like that. So play Paradise Druid. Shamanic Revelation. There it is. Perfect. We alive. We are alive. Are we alive? Can we get up to 13 here? 15. We're alive. And we have Clothis's design ready. Multiple of them. All right. We in there. We might actually win this. Our board is so wide. Wider than your mom. Actually, no, it's not possible. Nothing's wider than your mom. All right. Did you land? Land. 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 Land, 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 Druid of the Cowl, Karametra's Acolyte, Paradise Druid, Paradise Druid. Okay, we should have this. They got one card left in hand. Yo, they're not even giving whatever you call it. I can chump block here, dude. All right, I'm gonna have my fun. It's about to go down. It is about to go down right now. One, two, three, four, five. Um, Gigantosaurus. Let's just let's just do the Clovis's designs now. All right, Clovis's design. Come on, let it go. Let it go. I want to see how much damage this is. This has got to be like 200. These are 2020 dudes. Another one. 
And might as well suggest a petitioner to gain a billion life. <laughs> These are all 39s and 40s. They didn't even let me swing. <laughs> they didn't let me swing. Okay, bring in reclamation sages. Um, I really need those Satessan Petitioners. Those shamanic revelations were clutched there, but I really don't expect that to happen again. Uh, cut a couple Paradise Druids. I guess one shamanic revelation. All right. Maybe we're in need of your mom emote. That wouldn't even fit on the screen. If you put a mom emote in the chat, it would just blow up your computer. Do you want your phone to explode? Then we can't have a mom emote. All right, so I learned my lesson to keep hands like this and just pray we draw into card draw because mulliganing and hoping for a bomb is not the way to go because then you just mulligan into more hands like this and then you're screwed. And the more this deck mulligans, it's not going to turn out because you really need a lot of devotion and creatures on board for your stuff to be active. So, got to keep these openers. Don't thought seize me, dude. Hateful Eidolon. Yep. Can you check the chat real quick? Nothing in chat, alright. Yo, that's a Gigantosaurus. Sramton? Oh no, Brain Maggot, it's gonna take my Gigantosaurus. <laughs> or my Karametra's Acolyte. One of the two. Your mom is getting clapped in chat. How do you clap your mom? She would clap you with her cheeks. They take Karametra's Acolyte. They don't want me having that hyper devotion. Yo, Rex Age though. Kind of tempted, I don't know. I think I'm gonna wait on it. Let's just assemble our mana first things first. We need some mana out there. I don't really need my Karamentra's Acolyte yet because I don't have like Clothis's design or Shamanic Revelation, so I don't need it yet. You don't get to make as much content for MTG. You make content for an educational travel company, so you're always traveling around the UK recording footage. Oh, so you're like, um, what do you call them? A journalist? You're like a journalist or something? Well, at least you get to travel, and traveling's nice for some people. I'll admit traveling's pretty nice, like... The thought of traveling doesn't seem too appealing to me, but when you actually go and do it, it's like... Being out there in the world and just like... Seeing that the world isn't as small as you thought it was, and... And then you come home and it's like, oh man, what am I really doing here? I have to strive for more in life. Vacations really open your eyes. Yo, Nightbot finally did his job. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Nightbot, for being smart. All right, let's just slam this dinosaur. Don't remove it, please. They got one card left in hand. And I'm going to gain so much life with this petitioner because Gigantosaurus is five green. So I'm going to gain... One, two, seven, eight, nine life. Even more because I'm gonna play something before it. Okay. 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 Um Whenever a creature dies, draw a card for each aura. So I would make them draw two cards if I killed this. But it would be off the board so I can swing everything.
I feel like if I swung with Gigantosaurus, they would block here and draw two cards. I feel like it's worth it, though. They're taking it. I think it's lifelink, but it's not that big. I'm not going to Rex Age yet. I don't think I need it yet. I feel like I can wait for something better. I'm gonna gain a whole lump sum back up to 23. Nightbot is best waifu. Why? Okay, I've heard people use the word waifu like at least 300 times in the past two years. What does it mean? I don't know what a waifu is. I've heard that term so much, and people say it all the time. I don't know what it means. Is it a weeb thing? All right. Oh, no. Now with Double Hateful Adelon, they're going to draw four cards, aren't they? Let's see. If I... If I kill that with Rex Sage, I would be able to swing with everything... Except the, the Elvish Mystic. And... And then... That would be 16 damage? If they took it, they'd be down to... To 4. And... They would draw 4 cards. They would draw 4 cards. They would just bombard us with even more enchantments on something and make it huge. But then they probably have to stay back in defensive mode. I guess that's what I do. I don't like it, but... This feels like the smartest play. I don't know. I should have done it last turn because now they're going to draw double the cards. Oh, they only draw... Oh, no, they draw four. Right, attack with all of these. When a Japanese person tries to say wife, it sounds like waifu. That's what it's about? Oh. That makes sense. They do add u uh, to at the end of every word. All right, I, I, I get what they mean. So Nightbot is best waifu. Is Nightbot even a waifu though? Okay, they're gonna take it all down to four. See, this is, this is the scenario we talked about. Now they have a full grip, kinda, six cards, and they do have that Sentinel's Eyes to escape and the Griff's Boon to bring back. But they have to probably stay in defensive mode. And they have to make this lifelinker big. They're going to shock down to two and commit all to this hateful Eidolon. Yep, there's the SRAM. I don't know why they didn't tap this caves. Because now they have to pay a life. Cartouche is a blocker. At least it doesn't have totem armor. At least there's no totem armor in this format. Another cartouche. Also, there is Husbando. I've never heard Husbando before. See, that's why you tapped wrong opponent. You had to tap the caves in the plains to play SRAM. And Cartouche number three, making even more blockers. That is a lot of blockers. Oh, they're putting it on the Brain Maggot. Because they want to spread that first strike around. But I can just swing forever with this Gigantosaurus. But the problem is... Oh, they're actually getting in there. Alright, I'll take it.
Yeah, killing that hateful Eidolon might have been my downfall. Probably shouldn't have done that. Yo, that's a nice top deck. Six cards and four life. And a Clovis is design. Ready for next turn. Alright, I have four mana to work with. I I guess I go triple triple mana dark. I'm gonna swing. I think I am gonna swing with the Gigantosaurus, literally just to get a blocker off the board. So that next turn I go super mega wide. Alright. I don't think they can kill us here. And then Clothis' design should be mega super ultra overkill. So that's one, two, three. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Plus 14 plus 14. And then we're gonna swing with 9 dudes that are at least 15 power. <laughs> so they have to make enough chump blockers for our whole board. And even if they survive, they're gonna lose their whole board. So it's fine. This lifelink's okay because our dudes are gonna swing for a minimum of 15. So, that is fine. I'm just gonna take it. They're just super dead here. They gotta have, like, a Declaration in Stone to hit my Elvish Mystics. That's what, that's what would be what would keep them alive here. Also, deck and stone of my Gigantosaurus would be pretty good because that knocks out a lot of my devotion. But if they just pass here, I think it's over. Hateful Eidolon and... Are you going to get back with Sentinel's Eyes? They don't. Okay. So, Clothis' design should just be game. I have nine attackers. They have six blockers. Yeah. Slam. Plus 15, plus 15 to the whole team. Plus 14, actually. And get in there. Every single threat on board is lethal, and you have one life linker, which is not enough. So, can you live here? I don't think you can. If you have a fatal push, and you push like a paradise druid? Yeah, you're still not living. GG. All right, we slammed them. Just completely trampled over them. So, shout out to Black White Sram. This deck's actually getting pretty popular and it's like it's trying to compete for the spot of the Boggles. Like there is banned Boggles, which I personally feel is better cuz the hexproof is much more worth it than um Hateful Eidolon and I guess they're only black splashes like Something like that. I don't know. I like I like band boggles better. I mean, I don't like it in particular, but I would say it's got to be better competitively. Got a game here against our team, Mason714, and we are on the draw like we always, always are. And I'm going to keep this hand with some $3 revelation. We just cannot be on the play ever. We've been on the draw every single round. It's crazy. Ooh, that is super nice because I have the Acolyte and the Shamanic Revelation and the Gigantosaurus is what's going to make my mana go through the roof. Five bucks for the deck would still be budget. Yeah, but I wanted to make this deck as cheap as possible though. It doesn't matter that five dollars is still budget. It just matters that I made this deck as cheap as I possibly could. All right, let's play a Druid of the Cowl. Because I don't want a Paradise Druid to get sniped by a Ballista. And there's a Ballista. They had a Coco on top, right? So they can find their Heliod. So now they can Coco, but they probably want to draw that Ballista. They got a uh, Selfless Spirit. Selfless Spirit's so annoying because it stops the, the Clothis' design. Alright, well, 
Carry Metro's accolade number one. I gotta draw land though. I really gotta draw land. Land is what I need because I gotta get out this uh, Gigantosaurus before tapping Carry Metro's accolade, so. Land, please. Oh no, Dramoga's command. That can almost kill Carry Metro's accolade, but not quite. Yeah, Clothis' design should give Trample, but then it'd be busted. It would be crazy good if it gave Trample. And Ballista on two, now they can shoot down an elf. Are they gonna do that though? Okay, I didn't get it. Um... Let's go with Paradise Druid. Let's go with Gigantosaurus. And then next turn, we do things. Things that are particularly cool. We're gonna draw a bunch of cards, gain a bunch of life. Nope, but there's a Heliod, so we can't do all that stuff because combos are cool. Um, so let's go on to sideboarding and bring in our Reclamation Sages. Uh, we really don't need our Satessan Petitioners, so let's cut those and bring in a Lifecrafter's Bestiary. And I run it like so. So Clothis' design giving Trample wouldn't be particularly busted now that I think about it because Overwhelming Stampede is nuts, but then again, that's a Commander card. And then Overrun gave plus three, plus three, and Trample for five. So for one more mana, it'd be gi giving like plus six, plus six, and Trample. Which would be pretty good. Like to go first? Yes. That's not going to do it. It's a little too slow. This one is very, very slow as well. Very slow. I think I have to mulligan down to five. Not going to four, so I'll keep that one. Well, this hand is literal nothing. But Rex Sage can at least destroy a Ballista or a Corsair, so long as they don't go to Selfless Spirit. Okay, well, there's a Shamanic Revelation. I'm kind of hoping they have a Corsair or something I can use this Rex Sage on here, so that I can have more bodies on board for when I. Play Revelation. I think regardless of what happens here, I will throw it out. Militia Bugler. Is that gonna find a Corsair? Finds a Walking Ballista. Well, Drew to the Cow gives me something to do other than waste the Rex Sage. Yeah, but the thing is, like, if Clovis' design gave Trample, it'd probably be, like, banned in standard. You know how, like, it literally would be, it would literally be a six mana card that reads win the game, like, every time. Ooh, that's nice. Coco in response to Gigantosaurus. It's Corsair and Selfless Spirit, so now my Rex Age doesn't kill the Corsair anymore. And they have a Deccan Stone on top. Nice, nice solid thing to have be the seventh card after a Coco and be on top. But maybe this Rex Age can bait them to sack their Selfless Spirit, allowing me the chance to actually win with Clothis' uh, design later. And they got the Heliod out. They're gonna deck and stone deal with that thing. Gets in for six, we will take it down to 14. And there's a Nyx Lotus, I like that a lot. I think I am gonna take the turn off to play that. I gotta get some hyper ramp going. 
And then I'll just take whatever swing they want to throw at me here. I probably should have kept the Druid of the Cowl up instead of the Paradise Druid. It's because it's a 1-3 and it can block the Corsair or the Militia Buggler. But our life total isn't too relevant here. So the Corsair with the Heliod's pretty cool. Getting life off the land triggers, getting counters on dudes. And, uh... They can pump up their board, but it don't matter because they have a Ballista to instantly kill us because combos are cool. Yay. GG. Got a game here against Crumbles 2010, and we are going to be on the draw with some $3 Clothis' Revelation. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep that. We got turn 2 Druid into turn 3 Nyx Lotus into turn 4 Gigantosaurus make a million mana. Ooh, turn one Lanwar Elves. That's a nice addition to this little thing we got going on here. So now this Clothis' design has uh, definitely lethal worth of bodies. We're going to have a lot of devotion. And the opponent seems to be on an uninteractive deck. I'm hoping that this is just blue-green and that it is not Sultai. Therefore, our stuff can uh, resolve and do what it wants to do. So I'm hoping this is the blue-green ramp deck. It's trying to get up to Ulamog. Feels like it, but... I don't know if they play Botanical Sanctum. But seeing as how their deck is foiled out... Yeah, I was guessing it was Delirium. That makes a lot more sense. Just please don't have, like, interaction. That's all I'm asking. Um... Yeah, let's just get out this Gigantosaurus. Cloud Wonder isn't legal. It is not legal in Pioneer. Isn't Plow Wonder from like... Tenth edition? No, it's not. It's got a black border. Tenth edition's black border. I don't know. Like World Wake or something? I'm not sure. Okay, it's a fairy bounce. So they're five color Niv. So this is gonna be scary. Oh, another Gigantosaurus, dude. I should have probably played Nyx Lotus there. Abrupt Decay's Druid of the Cowl. That is fine. Alright, well, you know what I'm gonna do? Swing at them for 10. They're going to chump block. Welp. We are going to slam another one of these bad boys. And pass the turn. <laughs> Dubs 10 tens. We just basically played a desolation twin. Do they have hard removal? Oh no, they're gonna instant speed bring to light Niv, and then they're gonna find all the removal spells for my Gigantosaurus. But if they don't, I cloth this is design and swing for um like 50 damage or something like that. Like, how much is this? 11 devotion. So my creature's gonna get plus 11 plus 11. That is 33 plus. What was that? Bring to light Solar Blaze? No. Oh. We keep getting screwed in the most BS ways. That was ours. Now how the heck do we win? Like, the opponent's stabilizing. And I have no creatures, so any future Shamanic Revelation does nothing. Well, it's pretty over, guys. I don't know what to tell you. Slaughter games. Before they see my deck, I'm just gonna scoop. Alright. See, that opponent knows what's up. They're running the main board slaughter games, like I said, people should be doing nowadays. With all of the combo in Pioneer, 
People should be mainboarding the heck out of that. Also on Mordigo. All right. So in this matchup, let's bring in um, Shaper Sanctuary and a Lifecrafter's Bestiary. Let's cut three Shamanic Revelations and four Tessin Petitioners and run it like that. So now we can get all this cumulative card advantage rather than get our Shamanic Revelations disrupted. Um, all right, I will keep the turn one Shaper Sanctuary. However, I'm still fearing sweepers. So they can still get around it. Hashtag reprint Mon Voli. Everybody loves Mon Voli. Who doesn't love Mon Voli Acid Moss? It's a great card. Gilded Goose. Another Clothis' design. How about more Colossal Dreadmaws? Yeah, we need a few more of those. It hasn't been reprinted enough. It's too expensive. So if they are printed a little bit more, maybe the price of Colossal Dreadmaw will go down. Because it's like seven cents and it needs to be like three cents. So if they are printed it like two more times, maybe it'll go down to three cents. All right, well, I'm going to swing it to Fairy because I have nothing else to do. All right, well, I'm going to do the same thing. Swing it to Fairy. Yeah, like 50 damage. I was gonna swing 54. Last game when I was gonna cloth as a design, I was gonna swing 54. And the opponent's like, bring the light solar blaze, instant speed, you're dead. Part of me wishes that wraths didn't exist. Like any effect that says each creature either gets damage or destroy all creatures or something like that. Part of me wishes it didn't exist. Because I love creature-based decks and they always get screwed by single single cards that say destroy all creatures. Divination. You gonna counter my divination? You about to counter my divination? Are you about to instant speed solar blaze? Or are you gonna bring to light curse of death's hold? Yeah, I'm just gonna scoop now. They just disrupted my Shamanic Revelation. I'm losing my board, I'm drawing zero cards. I'm stuck with two Clothes' designs, but I don't have any devotion. And yeah, so heavy removal decks are just things we wanna avoid. They always find ways to screw us. Got a game here against Zeb Hillard, and we are gonna be on the draw here with some $3 Clothes' Revelation. And this is gonna be a mulligan because we got zero lands. And this one is going to be a keep. I like this. So I think I'm going to bottom a Satessin Petitioner because I currently do not know if I need it or not. So hoping they're not on Demir Inverter. Okay, Battlefield Forge can mean Chonky Red. And Chonky Red is one of the most atrocious matchups we can possibly get because they have Wild Slash Shock, Stomp, and Lightning Strike. And a Rampaging Ferocidon, which are all cards that destroy us. And that are all in their main board, so. We gotta get some super, super good luck here. But the upside is that they really can't deal with the Gigantosaurus. But they can deal with our ramp up to that point. And of course, as expected, there's removal number one of ten. Alright, at least Paradise Druid is hexproof, so we're gonna guarantee get out our Acolyte. They found their second land, so it looked like they were a little bit land screwed. But another card that wrecks us is um, Eidolon of the Great Rebel. You know, I could I could trade here. I could trade here. I'm not going to, but I was kind of tempted to for a second. Alright, now the Acolyte is here. It's a good blocker. It can block Ragavan. 
But Ragavan in conjunction with another Wild Slash effect is going to do the job, so I'm kind of less tempted. All right, they tapped out, so now I know it's safe to block Ragavan. All right, give me a Shamanic Revelation, please. Nope. All right, well, it's time for Clothis' design or Revelation, please, deck. It is time, now that I have the Devotion online. Also, we're we're fearing Goblin Chain Whirler in this matchup too, because a lot of our mana darks are X1s. We have 12 X1 mana darks that we are fearing getting killed from a Chain Whirler. No attacks, alright, I successfully hold back the flirt. You know what? I'm actually gonna swing here. Because I force them No, I don't really force them to chump block. Because they can take it down to four, and they can swing back with everything. I can block with, you know, like, Karametra's Acolyte, Druid of the Cowl, and I would end up taking, like, four, something like that. Yoski14, <laughs> thank you for your resubscribe with your Prime subscription for two months in a row. Welcome back to the Marination. Enjoy your moon. Nope, your ducks, your nuts, your spikes, your lands, and your G's. Can we get two duckies in the chat for Kioski14? Welcome back. All right, so if I do, like, I can survive. And then I swing them down to four, and then they're forced to leave back a chump blocker. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Because also, these Paradise Druids are hexproof, so they can be attackers as well. So I kind of force him to stay back with, like, more things. Because I expect him to take it here. They're just going to chump with the Swiss Spear. All right. That is fine. Now, they can deal, like, three max to me here. If they just play the Bone Crusher, that's not bad. Yo, I got the Clovis's design. I got the Clovis's design. All right, now here we go. Clovis's design. Give my creatures plus, what is that? Six, seven, eight, nine, plus nine, plus nine. And now swing for like a hundred. How much is this? 19 plus 10, 11, 11. So that is 32 plus 19 is 54. Okay, I swear to goodness, if if the opponent has land, wild slash, wild slash, wild slash, wild slash, and then we just die, I would be the saltiest I've ever been. But no, we wouldn't actually die. We're at 13. We would live on one. Yep, the opponent scoops it up. Okay, there we go. Finally got a Clovis's design. All right, so in this matchup, we're going to cut... Um... Shamanic Revelation gains us life, but the problem is the opponent could, like, have the, their Ramanop, their, what do I, I always forget the name, Rampaging Ferocity on out, and then just prevent my life gain. And this might be a little bit too slow, because I wouldn't want to tap out anyways. So, but I do really like Sh um, Shaper Sanctuary in this matchup. Um, but I think I am going to cut one of the bombs. If any of the bombs, I think... I think it's got to be shamanic, right? No, I think I'm going to cut two shamanic and then just like two mana darks. Like, like two paradise druids. Because they are X1s that die to chain whirler. Uh, Reclamation Sage can kill the Eidolon, which can be pretty relevant. Can be relevant as an elephant. Um... But I don't know if they're going to bring that, if they, like, actually have that. They should. They definitely should have that in their 75. I'm going to bring in two of them. I'm going to cut Paradise Druids. Keep in one Paradise Druid. No. Alright, whatever. Just do it like that. Oh, 
All right, I like that. We got the turn one uh, Shaper Sanctuary. Make sure the opponent doesn't go killing our stuff. We got the Swift Spear. What's up, Alakaris One? After years of watching on YouTube, you finally catch a live stream. Well, thanks for coming out to the live stream. I appreciate you, and thanks for watching the YouTube channel for years. Have you been commenting? Maybe I'd recognize you from the comment section. Another one. All right, well, uh, I'm kind of tempted to play a second one and then play a land war elf. So if they want to kill it, I draw even more cards. Yeah, let's do that. So if they want to kill the land war elves, I draw two cards. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Oh, no, they're going to hit our face. Yeah, they don't want us to draw two cards. And there's the Rampaging Ferocidon. I knew it! I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Alright, Druid of the Simon Cowl. Yep, I'd take a Demoglio. Get out another Shaper Sanctuary. Pass the turn. So I have five Devotion of Green. So all I need is like... A, um... One of those devotion things, like a Nyx Lotus or whatever. Nyx Lotus or uh, Karamentra's Acolyte so that I can play this Clothis' design easily. Lethal. We're gonna play their Bone Crusher Giant. Now I'm pretty screwed. Uh... Well... I guess I get some devotion on board. I mean, sure. They don't have Eidolon. I think I'm gonna take them out. They probably don't have Eidolon. The Marshmallow. Are you against Arena? I love your content, both Twitch and YouTube, but I would love to see you brew on standard Arena. Well, two things. Two things about that. Uh, one, Arena is way too dang expensive. I'm not rich, I can't afford getting a new deck every week on Arena. The wild cards, like, it'd be like 200 bucks to get a single deck every week. Um, secondly, I'm dead. Thirdly, um, my GPU sucks, which is your graphics card for your computer. And so when I play Arena, or when I stream Arena, it lags like crazy, like unbearably laggy. Um, because I, I built my computer on a budget because I'm not rich. And, and fourthly, um, I'm not really a big fan of standard. I kind of was not, I kind of lost interest in standard after like cons. Siege Rhino kind of kicked me out of that train. And then I just started focusing more on modern. All right, so on the play, I don't think there's Adalon. Let's cut the Rex Sages. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Let's bring Paradise Druids back in. At least a couple of them. And run it like that. So, you know, I feel like I want to cut a Revelation and bring another Paradise Druid back in. It's too late, though. I already submitted. Would you like to play first? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll keep that. We can gain a bunch of life with the Satismaticianer, and then Clovis's design. But I need more, I need a big mana generator. Problem. I don't have a Shaper Sanctuary, so they're, they're just gonna straight up bolt the bird here. Um, but yeah, like, I, I would play, I would play Arena Marshmallow if I had a good GPU, but my GPU is bad. It is like really bad, but yeah, if it worked, I would definitely do that kind of content. Um, I'm gonna play Paradise Druid because I can actually kind of try to race, as funny as that is. Because with this uh, Satessan Petitioner, I can I can definitely go for a little bit of a racing situation. Now, opponent, don't stomp my elf. Be be polite. Be polite. Play nicely. Mom said so. 
Oh, dang it. They're gonna stop my elf. Yep. And out's fearing. All right, play Druid of the Simon Cow, get in there for two. Now opponents, please don't kill my Paradise Druid now that it's losing Hexproof. Ponzas and taxes are your favorite. You love messing with lands, me too. I love messing with lands. That's my guilty pleasure in Magic the Gathering is blowing up mana. They really have another Stomp plus a Wild Slash? Oh no, they're just getting rid of that. Okay. And Zergo Bell Striker. Alright, well. Getting a little bit of life, I guess. Getting there for two. We're on this racing train. We have a goal in mind. Used to play Magnavore Ponza back in 2005. There wasn't much grave hate. Magnavore is that suspend card, right? The suspend card that, like, every time, like, it. Oh no, that's Detritivore. What's Magnavore? Because Detritivore is the one that suspends and blows up lands and stuff. All right, so I do have enough for Clothis's design, but I want to get another petitioner first to gain five life. And the next turn, I'll go for Clothis's design and swing for 14. I would definitely prefer to get out a Gigantosaurus first. So Gigantosaurus would be a nice top deck. If the opponent can just swing all and tap out here, that'd be nice. I'm just gonna take it. I need my devotion. Soul Scar McGee, not even gonna play those Bone Crushers. Yo, asking you shall receive. All right, it's going down, guys. Next turn is the turn. The problem is these don't get trample, so they can still very well just chump blocks. But we're at a pretty healthy life total, and I can probably hold back the floor with this Gigantosaurus for a turn. And I doubt they have a lot to do. They seem more low to the ground mono red rather than chonky red. So I have a good feeling about this one. I don't know. My mana dork's hexproof. My creature's gonna get plus 10 plus 10 and I'm gonna swing for a lot. Find a Nyx Lotus. Okay, so I could wait a turn and then also get in a swing with this Paradise Druid. Is it too greedy to wait, or do I just go for it now? If I just do it now, they're just gonna chump with three things. <sighs> so if I do it now, they might just go to one and just take the rest. Like, they might just go chump with a Muta Vault, and then like a Swift Spear and a Soul Scar. Might be too dangerous to wait, dude. I really don't know. Okay, so what if... You know... I'm gonna wait. Because if I draw another Gigantosaurus or like another... Or like a card draw effect like Shamanic Revelation. And then I'm gonna have so much mana with this Nyx Lotus. And then I'm gonna be able to draw out even more. Play more to the board. And then Clothis is designed. So yeah, I have this, this, this sight in my future that this is going to happen. I probably should have swung with Gigantosaurus there, if I'm being honest. I have to, like, get them in a threshold where they're forced to chump. But now, since these guys are too power, they're going to be 14 power. It's not enough. Oh, that's a problem. Probably should have done this earlier. Oh, they're still staying back. Oh, Paradise Druid. Okay, so... Yeah, that does... The, these are now lethal threats. That is definitely makes these 15 power. So I'm going to force them to chump... Four things in this muta vault they can't they can't get that active now this is my chance paradise druid
Well, office is design. Wait, only 13? What? Why are they only 13? Okay, I'm still doing it. I committed. I'm doing it. I thought they were going to be 15 power. Somehow I did the math in my head. Apparently I was wrong. Because they're giving plus 11 plus 11, so I should have thought. They can take one of them now. They only have to block three. I do have a hexproof chump blocker, though, so that's good. They're down to two. All right, anything, any of my board is lethal. So they can't really swing. But if they draw a land here, they can play double bone crusher. And they'll have five blockers. So that would be annoying as heck. They do have mutavaults vaults to chump, though, so. Ooh, they're going for lethal here. Are they going for game? Oh, yeah, they're going for game. Dude, I got all these lethal threats. Jumping. Yeah, they're probably giving up now. We're down to eight. No wild slash does it. If they got land, double wild slash, but they only got two cards. And we got there! Yes! Ugh. That's so scary. It's such a horrible matchup with all the burn. Like, double stomp was annoying, but that wasn't enough. And what really got it for us were the, those two uh, Satessin Petitioners. Now, originally, this list had four Satessin Petitioners and four Nylea's Disciples as the massive life bombs. Just play a bunch of, draw a bunch of cards, play a bunch of life bombs. And that would have been awesome, but I guess two was enough. Before we get into the sped up rounds of the video, I would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. We'd like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the videos, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. And today's VOD was quite the long one. We played a lot of games and like 80% of them, I'm not kidding, like 80% of our games this stream were like all Thoughtseize fatal push sweeper decks and so we don't have that many games in today's video there's like six total i believe because we're speeding up the next two and we had four that weren't sped up but yeah like all the rest of them were all of them were like mostly just thought sees fatal push sweeper board just kill everything decks and we can't really compete with those because that is exactly what stops us <laughs> so in this game we took game number one game number two if they didn't have this dang thopter that had the insole on it we would have definitely got there all we needed to do was survive one single turn the thopter from this hangerback walker i made the mistake of swinging into it i didn't see that it was a hangerback walker i thought it was just a ginger brute and so that thopter ends up getting a sword equipped to it and an insole artifact and if i had one more turn i had the cloth this is designed and they would have been overkilled but the thopter kills us just barely uh just one into lethal so we go into the last game and they have this ginger brute with the insole on it and i'm would be able to um just gain a bunch of life and draw a bunch of cards with the uh cloth this is uh with the shamanic revelation here because i have the um kiora or the the care metro zakalite going but they have the aether gust and that aether gust got them the game if it wasn't for that aether gust it would have been super over so that aether gust was clutch and uh, that could have been a very winnable matchup but um but yeah, that was uh, something that happened, the, the timely Aether Gust. So let's go on to the last game of the video. Now, this one I put in here out of pure respect because everybody else today was just on such spiky decks. Like, there was a lot of spiky decks today. Like, we even, like, did a league and it was just nothing but, um, like, Demir Inverter and, you know, stuff, like, that you'd expect to see in a league. Top tier stuff and just mono red all day and just you know, Thoughtseize decks. But this one was quite interesting. Here's where I was like, yo, I'm going to go into the tournament practice room because I'm losing so much money playing this deck. So I'm going to see what's up in the tournament practice room and see if I can get some cooler matchups rather than the spikes I've been fighting all day. And what do you know? I ran into this guy who was playing, or this girl or whatever. Um, They were playing a... um. A mono blue thing in the ice deck. At first, we didn't see thing in the ice because I saw the curious homunculus and I was like, okay, they're trying to reduce incident sorceries. They had the Baralda reduce incident sorceries as well. 
And then um, we, I think we beat them in the first game there, but on the second game is where we saw Thing in the Ice. Now, Thing in the Ice, it's dangerous because um, if they have two Thing in the Ices, first, the first Thing in the Ice is going to bounce the whole board and swing it for seven, right? And then if they play another Thing in the Ice and they bounce the board again, they swing for 14, and that is exactly 21 damage. So they're going to kill you in two swings. And it's really, that that was the game where I got it there, but it's really a, a shame here because we totally, like, again, this was just like the last round where we totally had this one, like at the last moment and they were super like close to death and they were about to die. And then they just barely were able to flip their second thing in the ice and hit us for just enough because triple thing in the ice swing is what gets it. And I had the miscutter Hydra pro blue as well. The pro blue on that miscutter Hydra and the can't be countered is what destroyed them in the second game. And I had it again, but it was forced to be used as a blocker this game. But the flip thing in the ice bounces it and they're able to hit us for 14 because three swings of seven will do it. So that's about it. Let's go on to the wrap up. Hope you enjoyed. So we ended up with two total wins. And uh, that is the amount of wins I think that we got last time when we played that $5 mono green elves on the channel, when we did that super budget. And I would say that they both had the same kind of expectations. They were both mono green, had a lot of mana dorks, and uh, they both get wrecked by typically the same things, like um, sweepers and, and a bunch of removal and whatnot. And uh, that is exactly what we went up against today. Um, you know, like other day, it's, it's weird how it works. I keep mentioning it at the end of every video, but like some days we go up against a lot of like combo and it's like the next day, the next stream I prepare heavily for combo because it's all you usually run into. And then we run into nothing but aggro and then I prepare for aggro. And then the next day I run into nothing but control and then, you know, like, and so on and so forth. So I was, uh, there was a lot of control today, whereas other days there's like no control at all. You know, like today I ran into all of like the worst matchups. Like if you want to go watch back the VOD on Twitch to see how it went down, you can sure go do that. It's a nice little four and a half hour stream. And, uh, we ran into so much control and like 80% of our matches, we ran into Thoughtseize. There was just Thoughtseize everywhere, dude. So much Thoughtseize so much tilt and so much sweepers and so much removal and so much burn and just nothing we could get on board was staying there and uh there was actually one matchup where we went up against uh mono green uh mono green stompy because we went up against blade master and uh th he, there's obviously no removal in that and so that was like the dream matchup Hello. nick heal mtg thanks for the follow um so that was obviously the dream matchup, but that was the one game, the one round where we didn't see a single shamanic revelation or Clothis's design. And that's, uh, you know, that's just the magic God speaking to you saying it wasn't meant to be. Um, but still we got at least a couple wins with the, with a $3 deck and beating, um, I believe it was chonky red. No, it wasn't chonky red. It was, I think it was mono red aggro. And then some other, uh, I forget what the other deck was, but um, it was something, uh, I think it was a Thoughtseize deck of sorts. But yeah, Thoughtseize was like 80% of our rounds today, like seriously. Um, but yeah, taking down expensive decks with a $3 deck is always welcome, no matter how many wins or losses you get. Uh, at least you got something out of your $3. Um, but I would say definitely invest a little bit more. Um, you could do a lot better, uh, a little bit more, like say like 15 more dollars can go a long way into really improving the quality of your deck. Like you can add Nykthoses, Nissas, and Voracious Hydras, and you can run, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things. You can, you can try more aggressive variant with like Steel Leaf Champions and like Yorvos and, um, yeah, that's around it. Although I, I like the idea of Clothis's design. But it kind of like falls apart when your Gigantosauruses die and when they start killing all your mana dorks. And uh, that's what you want to avoid. Like usually we're just going to try to flood out with mana dorks and just cloth this design and win. But just today was so much removal. Every single round, every single round we were going up against decks that had like a minimum of like 14 removal spells. Like every single round today. So we just could not keep these things on board to save our life. Um, but the rounds where it didn't happen, that was good. But also, notice we were on the draw, like, 
literally every round except for like two games and uh i think one of those games were one was one we that we actually won because we were on the play <laughs> like it's uh it's crazy how much we were on the draw today we um uh, I definitely don't have 14 rounds in the YouTube video, I know that, but um, on the Twitch stream, we had 14 total rounds we played, and um, we were on the play twice. <laughs> so uh, it really helps to be more lucky than me. If you, try to, if you try to build a deck like this, my tip to you is be lucky and uh, don't be like me. So uh, you can be on the play a little bit more, win some more die rolls, and because uh, decks with mana darks really want to capitalize off their speed by being on the play. So I'd recommend going first. Um, that's that's the, my main point of advice to you. Um, but yeah, mono mono blue or mono green budget decks are usually a lot better in, to make than um, any other mono color. I would say like you can build some pretty cheap mono white decks that can do pretty good, but mono green is the most brewability and the most accessibility, um, most cheap. So mess around with mono green, I would say, because you can definitely make something work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Let me know, know a deck you want to see in the comments down below. Um, go check out the social media. Links are down below in the description as well as the link to Twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams. We currently stream every Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Hope to see some of you guys there. And uh, thank you to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat. And we're going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.